Hi there, Story Savants. How's everyone doing this week? Today we are going to talk about writing and critique groups. If you have one, I'm sure you know how valuable they are. If you don't, this is going to be a really important episode for you to listen to. I'm going to give you a quick overview about what to look for in a writing group and why they're important, and then I'm going to let you listen to a slice of one of my writing group's meetings so that you can get an idea of the kinds of critiques we do for one another and kind of what the dynamic is. So come along with me and I'm going to teach you about writing groups today. Do you want to write fiction but don't know where to start? Believe me, I understand. I've stood in your shoes. I've wanted to write amazing stories and wondered if I was even on the right track. I worried and struggled for years. I know what it feels like to have no idea what you're doing. Like everything you write is cheesy and amateurish, and you'll never be good enough to sit on the shelves next to the great authors of your time or the classics. But I want you to know there's an answer for you, a way to know that the stories you're writing will resonate with readers, a way to transform from wherever you are now in your writing journey to someone who's universally hailed as talented and a skilled storyteller. Welcome to The Story Savant, the podcast with free writing advice for the aspiring storyteller. I'm going to give you every tool I know to help you become a master storyteller. Every week, I'll bring you tips on story structure, characterization, themes, heroes, villains, and more to automatically make your story resonate with your audience. Stay tuned. We're going to learn to tell amazing stories, and we're going to have a ton of fun doing it. Let's do this. Okay, before we jump into that, quick update about me. I'm doing great. I'm still working on my course. I have kind of been doing less writing lately because I'm trying to push through and get my course finished so that I can focus on one thing at a time and not 14. <laughs> I tend to have that many projects juggling in the air all the time and it, it starts to stress me out after a while. So I should get my course done either this week or next week and then I'll be able to dedicate a whole lot more time to my writing again. So I'm looking forward to that and also of course to getting my course done which will be a big accomplishment for me. Uh, in terms of everything else, our state, I'm in Utah, is really on the upswing. I've been noticing there's a lot fewer restrictions going on, a lot more people out and about. In fact, I had a fix-it lady uh, working on my house today who told me that Home Depot is just hopping. <laughs> and that's probably because with everyone being at home, it's very easy for them to do their yards. You know, we're coming into spring, people need to spruce up their yards, do not only the mowing, but landscaping, things like that. And we are having really, really nice weather here right now. So I thought that was kind of funny, but it's a good thing because I'm sure they're taking all the necessary precautions they need to, but that particular company, business is hopping. And that's important to remember when you hear the really negative, down in the dumps, world is ending kind of reports, you know, because people think the economy is in the dumpster. Yeah, obviously it's slowed down. There's no way it couldn't have, but there are actually quite a few businesses that are booming right now. So just keep that in mind when you hear those those negative reports. So yeah, I'm just working on stuff and doing well. I hope everyone out there is doing well and that you're safe and healthy. All right, let's get into critique groups. In my opinion, critique groups are one of the most important parts of your writer's journey. I have actually been with a critique group for almost 10 years since college, and actually several of the people in my critique group have known each other since college. We met in the writing program at Weber State University and, you know, got together and started meeting and critiquing each other's stuff. Over the years, people have come and gone. Sometimes people just can't focus on it, can't, you know, dedicate the time to it, which is completely okay. We understand that. But we've also had people leave for a time and then come back. So, Again, we've known each other a long time, we know each other really well, and we still, almost 10 years later, are still doing this. And the reason is that it is so important, especially when you start out. It helps you to understand the weaknesses in your writing in a way that you cannot understand on your own. Okay, we all think we do. We tend to have blinders on when it comes to our own writing, and we think it's awesome, but we don't know what we don't know. All right, so having other people read it and give you suggestions really helps you learn fast how to fix your own writing because everybody's writing is different, right? Everyone's going to have different strengths and weaknesses because everybody's different. So that's really, really important. And if you don't have a writing group, I would strongly, strongly recommend that you get one. So I'm sure the next question is, how do you do that? Well, it can be a little tough. We kind of had it easy because we were in classes together. And I actually, I remember I had asked around different people if they wanted to be in a writing group. And I, I had a hard time getting one started at first. I wasn't very persistent about it. I think I asked like everyone in this one class and nobody wanted to. So I kind of gave up. And then a few months later, someone called me and said, hey, we're starting a writing group. Do you want to join? And I was like, yes. 
So that's kind of how I got hooked up with them. But if you don't have anything like that where you're exposed to other writers, the internet is probably going to end up being your best tool. When we first started, especially because we lived pretty close by because we were all going to the same college, right? We actually were driving to one another's houses at the time to meet. But, you know, obviously you don't have to do that anymore, especially with COVID. If it's not proved anything else, it's proved that it's very easy now with technology for us to meet from a distance. And actually our group's been doing that for a while since we all left college. A lot of us still live in the same state, but it would still be like an hour's drive for some of us to get to each other's houses. So we use Zoom or Google Hangouts or, you know, whatever your app of choice is to meet and it works just fine. You know, there was a time a few years ago when the technology wasn't very good. It was very glitchy. And, and so sometimes we would get dropped or we would have a problem. And of course, you know, technology is still glitchy from time to time, but for the most part, it's pretty seamless now. It's really, really easy. So get online, find people who want to be in a critique group with you. Another way that you could do it is I know that our local writing chapter, which is called the League of Utah Writers, has critique groups that meet a couple of times a month. So you could go to something like that in your local area. If you get online, just Google it, writing groups around you, you'll probably find some. Most anywhere from big city to suburbs have them, unless you're like way out on a farm somewhere, chances are you're going to have a local writing group somewhere. And even if you don't want to keep going to that writing group over and over again, you could at least start there and find other people to meet with and then kind of start your own little group. And I would actually recommend that rather than going to the big ones. And I'll get to why in just a minute. But yeah, just get online. If not, that honestly, online is going to be the easiest because you can find people online who are other writers. There's a huge, huge authors community online. And you can find people, especially newbies like you, who want to help each other with your writing. And it's a great way to network with authors and meet more people. All right. So the next thing I'm going to talk to you about before we dive into letting you listen to my group (laughs) is what to look for in people who you are uh, creating a writing group with. Okay. First of all, you need to find people who will give you true feedback. This can get a little bit tough because especially when you first meet, you don't know each other very well. You're going to be a little bit walking on eggshells and not wanting to offend one another. And that's okay. That's just the way it's going to be when you first meet. But you need, you definitely want someone who's going to be honest with you. If you have a friend or family member who happens to be an editor or an avid reader or something, you can certainly use them. But you don't want to use like your mom or your grandma who's just going to say, oh, I loved it. Best thing I ever read. Okay, because we love them for that. That's just them being supportive of you. And that's great. But that is not going to help you grow as an author. You need someone who is going to give you genuine feedback, not because they're being mean, but because they want to help you grow. And you need to find that. That's why it's best to use other writers because they're more likely to do that. And and this is one of two reasons that I don't necessarily recommend the more general writing chapter groups. I mean, I'm sure they're fine and you can definitely get value there. I'm not bashing them, but I know that I have attended a few of those and they just, they do not go as deep as I like to go in a group. And that's usually the reason, because they don't want to offend people. And so they're not as honest as they could be in their feedback. They're just very gentle and don't want to offend you. And well, of course, I mean, again, (laughs) you understand why. Of course, you understand why they're trying to be kind. And that's great. That's great. But again, as a writer, you need a little bit of thicker skin and you need to be able to take what they're saying, not be offended by it, but learn from it. And make sure that your writing is growing based on that feedback. And so if it's just, oh, maybe look at possibly putting a comma here, that's just not going to help your writing. You need more than that. You need to go deeper than that. Okay, second thing you want to look for uh, in anyone who's going to be in your group is people who are there to actually do the work. Again, this kind of comes from experience. Over the years, we've had, like I said, a lot of people coming and going. And most of them came and went because of time constraints or, you know, they had a baby or something and so couldn't dedicate the time for a while. And that is completely okay and understandable. We were all very understanding about that. But we've had a few people here and there over the years who really weren't coming to group for the right reasons. I'm thinking of one person in particular, who at the time I didn't really understand what was happening. I kept feeling like she didn't understand my writing because several times in a row she would say something like, oh, well, didn't this happen in your chapter? And it was just something completely off the wall that had not happened in my chapter. And I just kind of went, um, no. And then I would turn to the others and say, did you guys think that happened in my chapter? And they would say, no. And so I was just thinking that maybe she didn't understand the way I wrote or something. And it actually was kind of disturbing me. Like, am I not being very clear in the way that I'm writing? And then one of the other ladies in the group kind of laughed and she said, no, it's not that. It's that she's not really reading the chapters very 
well. She was basically in group to talk about herself. She would come in every time and talk about her latest boyfriend, her weight loss, her love life. So she was pretty much just skimming through the chapters as fast as she could and not giving very good feedback. You don't want someone like that in your group, obviously. Uh, You want people who are going to be willing to do the work. And understand, it is work. We do this every week. We read each other's chapters. And this is on top of our own writing and our own families and our own lives. Okay, so it is extra work. But I highly recommend it because you will grow so much faster and on such a deeper level if you do this than if you don't. And to be clear, we have never kicked anyone out of our writing group, ever. People who are there for the wrong reasons, they will fall away naturally. I think after a month or maybe two, she just kind of stopped coming and we didn't hear from her anymore. So you you certainly don't need to be unkind about it, but you're also going to know that this is not someone who's actually there to do the work and to work on their writing. Don't get me wrong. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of laughing, which you'll hear (laughs) when you listen, but we do get stuff done in our group. We do. We go through chapters every week and it also, I didn't even mention this before, but it actually keeps you on track for your writing. If say you're somebody who struggles with writing and you're not even getting a chapter a week out, well, a writing group will give you accountability. You have to get at least a chapter a week out to give to that group, right? So believe me, we get stuff done. It keeps us moving forward. And the third criteria I'm going to tell you is just you need to find people that you can laugh with. Like I said, you might not know right away because when you first meet people, it's hard not to be walking on eggshells around them a little bit. But you need to get to the point where you can all laugh, where you can be kind of sarcastic and razz each other and it's no big deal. And I think you'll hear that in our group. Most of us have known each other for the better part of a decade. Um, Some of us not quite that long, but long enough that we can laugh about stuff and joke around and it's not a big deal. Nobody takes offense, you know, and that's kind of the relationship you want because the second that people are tense and taking offense at the critiques that are being given right there is where you stop learning and you stop growing as a writer. Okay, so take it all in good fun. And of course, anything that is said is just a suggestion. When it comes right down to it, you do not have to take your group suggestions. It is completely up to you. But as with any kind of edit, if you have one person who thinks a certain thing, then maybe you can decide whether it's best for your story or not. If it's three out of four who are having a problem with the same thing, chances are that needs to be addressed. So this is just a way to get feedback and see the way people react to your character. Sometimes it's not even a matter of anything that's wrong with your writing. I know I shared a story with you guys where they actually really loved my chapter and that was super refreshing for me, but it also, it was so valuable even though that they didn't have a lot of changes on that particular chapter because it gave me an idea of how people would react to this character and to what was happening to her. And that's really, really valuable. All right, so I will stop talking. Those are my tips on how to find a group and what you're going to be looking for. It might take a little bit of time. You might go through a few people, but if you're earnestly looking for someone who, like you, wants to get the work done and who will support you as a writer and you're willing to support them back, you'll find it. You'll figure it out. And those are going to be some of your best friends and, you know, the most valuable part of your writing journey. Now I'm going to shift over after the break and let you listen to a good chunk of our last writing meeting. A couple of disclaimers I have here. First of all, I forgot to hit record at the beginning, so I'm the first one that you're going to hear talking, and it kind of starts in the middle of a sentence. It's going to seem really abrupt, but it's because I forgot to hit record originally, so you missed about the first five or six minutes of what I was saying. Also, there's a few people that are hard to hear, and it's because not all of us are using, in fact, I don't think any of us are using external mics. Like, my voice comes through really well because it's my computer that I'm recording it on, so I turned up the volume to help you to hear the ones that are a little bit softer, but because of that, when I start talking, it might kind of blast you out. So you might have to mess with your volume a little bit, depending on who's talking. And you don't have to listen to all of it or anything, but I just think that this will be a good way for you to get a good idea about what should be critiqued in your critique group, the kinds of things we do. And also, this is a good way for you to hear what I do as a coach. If you're wondering exactly how a coaching session would go, it's going to go a lot like this. Now, the main difference there is that usually we're talking about outlining and framing your story. It's not going to be necessarily me reading a chapter of your story, which is what we do in the group, but it's the same kinds of things. We're going to be going through, you know, make sure this is clear, make sure you know what your character motivations are, things like that. So you'll kind of get an idea of how we go back and forth and give each other suggestions. The one other thing that I wanted to mention is that honestly, 
our group, and I, I said this to my group a few weeks ago, we are actually a lot less like a critique group and a lot more like a mastermind group that happens to focus on fiction because we actually give each other a lot of suggestions for our plots. That's not something we have to take. We all get plenty of suggestions that we don't take and plenty of suggestions that we do take, but we really do help each other hash out the stories by being sounding boards and bouncing ideas off each other. And it's amazing how much that can help you with your writing. So that is something that you might want to take into account too. And that is what I help you do as a coach coach, figure out ideas for where your story is going and just being able to talk to somebody and hash it out. A lot of times it pushes you through your blocks and just really helps kind of unlock where the story is going. So I hope you find some value in this and we will switch over to that right after the break. Did you know you can work with me? I do story consulting on an hourly basis. So if you want help developing your story to make sure it will be a winner, go to my website at www.authorlkhill.com forward slash work with me to learn more. See you there. Let's see what else have I got. It's so obvious, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, that's a line from a movie that I really love. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'll, get, I'll get to that. I'll get to that when, we, when it's my turn. On page seven, he talks about how... We'd better move before it closes. I do not want to open another one. And I was kind of wondering why. Is it is it difficult or physically taxing for him to open the passage? A bit taxing and annoying. Okay. Maybe just have him say that in like a sentence so that we understand why. And then um, when they step through the passage, you do actually have some good scene details, like the afternoon, let's see, slatted afternoon light cuts through the treetops. And that gives us really good imagery for the time of day. But I still felt like we didn't get a very good um, setting there because I don't know like where they landed. Did they land in the forest or on the shore or in a mountain, in a meadow, you know, kind of give us a little bit more about where they are when they come through the passage so that we can kind of visualize it. There's a line here that I think is missing some words. I'll just let you look at that because I wasn't sure what you were trying to say. You talk about, I'm on page nine, a roaring sound in her ears. And I wasn't sure what was causing the roaring sound, if it was just meant to be like her pulse, or is it something that's in the clock tower? Yeah, mostly this one machine in her ears. I'm not anybody else gets that, but my nose has a high blood breakdown. Just like a... So maybe just clarify that just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, th those were all the big notes I had. Let's see, at the end... And this is not necessarily something you have to change, but I think we do need to understand her rationale for leaving Tomas behind. You don't actually have to say it in this chapter if it's going to come later. Like I was thinking maybe you would have Ariel ask why she's leaving Tomas behind or something. But no matter when it comes, I do think at some point we need to understand why she did that because you didn't actually give us her reason in this chapter. Yeah, when she drops him, says something like, live your life, I'll find you. She's basically, she's going back to the priest she doesn't want by the priest. She's hoping that he can live a somewhat decent life and just live out his normal lifespan because he's going to die at some point. She just doesn't want to be by the priest. But like I explained. Well and so maybe like why does she think that the priest will kill him? Does she have any particular reason for believing that his life's going to be in danger if he comes with her? I mean not that I've explained really carefully so maybe I should just be more <laughs> Ask her these tough journalistic type questions. Oh. <laughs> no, these are good. I mean, to me, it's obvious. Like, the priest is a bad guy, of course, but I mean... Mm -hmm. But he's not a seer, right? <laughs> no, he's not, so... But. That's what I mean. Like, it doesn't really matter what it is, but he, even if it wasn't for any tangible help that she would need Tomas, he's still, like, yeah. he's a friend, he's, like, her emotional support, so I think we just kind of need a really clear reason. Yeah. And like I said, you don't even have to state it in this chapter, but just at some point state it, you know, what, what her hey, reasoning is. Keep going, Liesl, and if you don't finish out, I'll finish out when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> Wyatt has some opinions. Okay. I always have opinions. <laughs> yeah, it's Wyatt. <laughs> is anybody opinionated in this group, it's me. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's all I had. It flowed really well, and I did I did really enjoy the chapter. Um, yeah, that's it. Great. Awesome. All right. Um, it's, not a, it's not a going last thing. Like well, <laughs> I think it's going. I saw the glare. <laughs> okay, so um, right off the bat, for some reason, I just, I mean, clearly, I, I said way too much in my, you know, second comment here. Um, 
But when it says, now I can see that Ariel is merely a puppet in the priest's hands, when when I first read it, I was like, well, doesn't she kind of already know that something like that is already up, but just kind of refer to it as blind faith? But at the same time, I see how, you know, she could now understand that it's that way, but maybe not suddenly see. I don't know. To me, that seems different. And let's see what I there's like blind faith that anybody can have and that's something that's really not his fault. Mm-hmm. But I like what you wrote there. And yeah, sometimes I do that too in comments. I'll like write a whole paragraph until I figure out what I'm actually trying to say. <laughs> Which is exactly what I did. Okay. Because <laughs> um, it was like, to me, it seemed like she just now has caused to shift the blame from Ariel to the priest. Yeah. Um, Making, you know, the priest the puppet master instead of Anyway, it just seemed more like a shifting blame, so it was more like an understanding she came to about where Ariel's coming from, so I don't know, like, really, nothing has to change, because for me, it was like a long walk for a short drink of water that was already there to begin with, so <laughs> do what you want with that long paragraph. Yeah, Jenny has some opinions, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really powerful question to me and so I just wanted a stronger expression or a stronger reaction um, from Ariel there something bigger than a sigh <laughs> reading Janae's comment naked okay um, okay so completely naked <laughs> right not completely okay so I know this is hard to hear I begin delicately that your mind is not truly your own but perhaps this is a comfort to know what you have become okay so what you have become I wondered if um she saw Ariel grimace at this because it's kind of like suddenly he's a what instead of a who just with that comment and I know it's more of a comforting thing so if you wanted to be more comforting then maybe say who instead of what or give us a reaction from Ariel just something really minuscule and slight um just because I mean I like the what because it really plays into what Ariel is starting to understand about his own spells and we go down a ways. oh I like that you called it a time walk I didn't remember that before and I really like that title for it Oh, and so <laughs> what Lisa was saying where we weren't sure who was saying the two paragraphs I thought it was Tomas saying all of it, so I just suggested combining the paragraphs, and then you don't have to worry about any extra tags or anything, just take out the space, if it is Tomas talking. I clicked on the wrong thing, and now I don't know where my comments are. Oh, okay, so um, when she says, this is on the last page where she says, I abandoned the love of my life for this. Um, that was a little bit cliche for me, so I would like to feel that more, actually feel the ache of her abandoning Tomas. So like Liesl said, you know, this is a good place to reiterate whatever reason she had for leaving him. You know, we see the ache, but then we see the reason behind it and just making us um, feel it more. And then I was confused about the, well, so I changed a lot here, like the muscles in my legs resist each step, a roaring sound in my ears, and I suddenly I wasn't sure, because I thought the roaring was internal when I first read it, um, but then I wasn't sure, so just clean up the sentence. And overall, I really, like, I like the ending. I think we could make it a little bit punchier by showing us something going forward, or giving us um, a stronger verb than step, you know, if she, because... Ariel pushes her forward so that she stumble in, you know, close one step closer to her death. I don't know what's going to happen, but you know, just something to give us um, a snapshot preview of the danger to come. So just to punch up the ending a little bit. But overall, I really liked it. Thank you. We're getting so close to getting back to the present, and I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> Good. I think there be two more chapters. Awesome. Nice. Cool. All right, Wyatt. That leaves you. What you got? I agree with everything that's been said so far, mm -hmm. for the most part. Yes. Pretty much. Okay. Um, there were some inline stuff that I'm just hoping that everybody else caught. Okay. Usually we've got some good editors in here, right? So I don't necessarily have to worry about that. 
So, have we, okay, how many chapters have we had with Catherine and Tomas? Uh, this is like probably a dozen by now. Okay. So, okay, so I felt, okay, so like. We came in at a really bad time. <laughs> what was that? We came in at a really bad time. <laughs> well, no, because like, cause, okay, because I was like, okay, so I hope this perspective is helpful. Coming in from the last chapter that we had, yes. which was Catherine again. Right, or, right. It was her last time. Yeah, it's been Catherine for a while. Yeah, and, and and she and she just starts reading Ariel's tattoos and all that stuff, which is which is really cool. I think the spells on the bone, written on the bones, and all that stuff. That's really cool. That's the one chapter I read, right? So then it just seems like out of nowhere. It didn't seem like la I don't remember from last time. And then I'm coming to this time, and all of a sudden it just seems like, oh man, I have to lie to Tomas save him right that really felt like it came out of left field to me you know and i'm like i only i've only read one chapter okay so so if i'm feeling like that and i've only read one chapter i think other people might want a little bit more development of her starting to get this idea that she might need to do something in order that she's going to say yeah right um had a hard time figuring out how she gets back to the crease so i've tried this idea of her doing it willingly and dumping tomas off so but i don't know how well it's working but maybe it's just because i need to flesh it out better yeah well 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 and, and, and here's the thing this, I, my, this this point actually is going a, a lot a lot along with what liesel was saying if she is feeling like this and if she is making a plan right i i think you know you can start peppering some hints in there in the last chapter so that you get to this one and you're like yeah this something happens in reading the spell that it solidifies it right boom that's it i'm going to do something and lie to him to save 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 him right yeah now i don't know that this matters at all but man if i was tomas and i found out that my chica was lying to me about all this i would be pissed right yeah disappear before he we can oh, see <laughs> oh i mean like like to, to to me to me this is like deal breaker stuff right <laughs> right I, I mean i'm talking about like if it was me and my woman was like oh man yeah I, i'm i'm just gonna try and you know yeah yeah you know yeah i think I, and, and in fact i mean i think it actually takes more courage to be like you know what I feel like I feel like I'm more powerful than you in order to handle this situation, and uh, I think you need to sit this one out. She could just be straight with him. That would be fun. Right. I, I, well, here's the thing. I don't get the idea that he would like that. I mean, some he. I mean, he was sitting there like sharpening and wetting his sword the entire time this was, this was happening. Right. Yes. That could add some interesting drama to 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 your thing. I don't know. I'm I'm not saying it needs to go that way, but I'm saying if I was Tomas, I would. I mean, like I would be. I would be kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of pissed, but I would also feel like a loss of respect for this person who is obviously supposed to be powerful and and chosen in some way. You know, why, why, why do, why do you gotta lie to me about this stuff, right? Right. Even so. if she did it to save your life. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If it yeah, was me, yeah. I'd be even more upset about that. Yeah. If someone tried to save my own life instead of giving me the choice to save my life. Yeah, that's that's grounds for being super mad. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, it's like I said, deal breaker stuff for me, right? Is this something that comes up if she decides to be straight with him, or something that throws in her face when he eventually drags himself back to the tower to see her? No, 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 I'm not. Now I'm, I'm not. I'm not bringing this up to like derail any plotting you might have done or planning. It's for not everything my plotting is. I mean, there's not much derailing that can happen. It's all there's no rail. It's just like. <laughs> Well, well, you know, I, I'm, but I, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like this, th these are, these are, these are the, I mean, these are the two, probably the two biggest things that that I felt, I felt while I was, I mean, like I think the rest of it, um, everybody else covered. I had the same thoughts, and you know, ha having just a little bit punchier of a of a of an in, of an uh, ending for the chapter. A little bit everything that everybody said I'm, I'm i'm down with but the two that those are two that for me i'm like yeah man there's there's opportunity for there's opportunity for some interpersonal relationship drama there so i still read genre fiction more than other kinds of things i'm bringing this up for a reason okay 
and I still read a lot, a lot of genre stuff. At this point, though, the genre stuff, even though I still read it and like it, some of the cool premises don't matter half as much as how good the characters are drawn. And I know that a lot of people would say that for a lot of things anyway, but yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that, that with, with some of these things here, you could, you could draw some really interesting things with your characters. That's a long meandering way of me saying that. Yeah. So last week, Mallory and Liesl and I had a little bit of discussion about like, Hey, you know, sometimes it's just cool to put, put, characters in certain kinds of situations and see what they would do right i think this is a good opportunity for that yeah but i enjoyed it i was (laughs) was, yeah yeah i don't want you to get through the oh man like this was this was so bad (laughs) no 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 well no i i I don't i didn't remember if i told you if i liked it or not it's okay (laughs) i'm like yeah no no but i was i was i was engaged and i want to see what happens but I would, but th- those comments were just a matter of like, I think there are some opportunities for improvement if you so choose. And then I want to see how crazy everybody else is back in the, the other, from the original series when they get back to them. Yeah, I'm excited to get back to the present too, just because I only had one or two chapters in the present. Yeah. If this is all about time, is this really, is it really the present? <laughs> She does. That's a big deal. And yeah. 
love enough that she can still keep her expression blank, even if she's feeling all kinds of things. So I just have her keep staring, and maybe just get a little harder right then or something. But I don't think she'd be turning her head. Make sure, I'm thinking so about the young woman with the feathers braided in her head. Head hair. <laughs> The last chapter, the one that like just walked in, walked out, and didn't do anything. Is this the same woman? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna add descriptions. So if you're ever curious about like if these are some of the same people, they probably are. But I'm going to add their descriptions um in the previous chapter when she oh. them like a physical characteristic. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let it thought. Be sure. Let's see. So now I'm on page four. Cameron realizes that she's shorter than all these people. And I'm wondering if that bothers her, like if she sees that as a disadvantage or if it's just information. Like she notices that. I want to know what she does with that. Ooh, I like this one here on page five. She says she hated playing nice when someone took her stuff. I was thinking like, when has this happened before? I don't want to hear it. I want to know if she has knowledge to draw on or experience with this with either Dax or Felix. And I mean, it just, it can be really just a quick little thing, but I feel like we just need a teeny bit of context here. Okay, like maybe just a paragraph of like another time this has happened or yeah, longer, like in earlier chapters. Yeah, maybe something that will inform what she does next. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't just want to throw in a little flashback there for no reason, but if there's something good that she can use, then yeah, give us the confidence. Like maybe that's when she learned that she just needed to be patient or something. Okay. A couple of us pointed out a POV problem on page five, like the last thing he heard her say. And I think that he was fixed out with wording to be like the last thing she said to him was, mm -hmm. or, yeah, the last thing she remembered saying to him. So that's the I didn't enter that comment, but she talks about foods that she never got to eat. I kind of just wanted more detail and like what. And I liked these rooms they're going through. Like there were some spatial things, like you described shelf and stuff, but you never really said the stuff was on the shelves. <laughs> So I wasn't sure if it was an empty shell or all the crap going in the middle of that, but a couple of things. And I like when they go through the cafeteria, the mess hall thing, and people are looking at her. And she, the only thing that the scripture you have here about how they're looking is judgmental, but I'm wondering, like, are they judging her for being dressed differently? Or are they curious and wondering why people are marching a stranger in new clothes through the mess hall? That's what I'd be curious, scared or something, but just judgmental. Like, maybe you're clothes and post apocalyptic place, and I don't think we're going to get that judging what people are wearing necessarily, but I want to know. I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get to know people. I really want a good idea of their reactions are her right now. I'm just going to set the tone. This is her first impression of them. Mm -hmm. Really important moment. Okay. Um, yeah, we got a lot to go through. Mostly just a quick little and mighty thing. Yeah, and then when they put her in the room at the end, I was just confused, like, why they trusted her enough to let her room with her own when she already took out somebody. And yeah, that's really it. That was my biggest thing. Just make sure the trust, we all know where we stand, that everything is clear about why we're trusting or why we're not trusting. But I really liked it and I'm excited. I feel like we're getting into good stuff now. <laughs> I, mean, I hope as long as I can make them I'm so rude. No, it's just like these <laughs> two characters that I didn't know we were gonna be. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> My favorite character comes up in the next chapter. Uh, exactly. Yes, thank you so much. And I'm done. I'm going to go next. You want to go next, Wyatt, or do you want me to? I can, I can go. Go for it. This is not even a reading the book chapter. <laughs> they, they don't even get to read a book. All they get to do is walk down the hall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and see a couple of things while they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a walking down the hall chapter. <laughs> not, even, not even reading a book. Not even reading a book. Now, if 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 my if my if my review from last time, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I don't trust none of these, none of these, right? It's not just, it's, it's not, it's not just, you know, going to McKellis thing. It's not just if they're gonna give up a room, they're making it out to be kind of an olive branch, but not quite, because they're still like, yeah, well, you kind of beat up our dude. It's kind of gaslight you about about beating up our dude here, right? <laughs> Not that, you know, because cause it's really all your fault, and not not the fault of the fact that we had already had you captured, and are, we're, we're going to drug you and experiment you on some way, you know. So that kind of olive branch of giving her the room actually 
kind of feels a little bit flimsy as well. Um, and at this point, I like if I were her, I'd be all over that. Meaning that maybe potentially there could be a little bit more other olive branches in terms of we're going to try and gaslight you into our way. Pod is just here for its protection. Right. Mm -hmm. That is nice in that it does sound sinister enough to the reader. (laughs) The pod is in the protection. So I'm wondering if there isn't... I was trying to come up with examples because typically if I give advice like this, I like to have examples. But I was wondering if there aren't a couple more places where you could have places where they're obviously trying to gaslight her other than other than just that but at the same time also have a few more things that might be considered olive branch in this case the reason i couldn't think of anything is because i've only read one chapter but after listening to michaela's comments it did spark an idea and what if those olive branches aren't tidbits whether they be and they don't you don't even have to tell the reader you just feed her information from essie about felix Mm -hmm. it can be a lie it can be the truth it can be something did you know felix boom but something that's going to hit cameron in the oh maybe these people are my friends and i should join their side kind of thing well, there's a little bit more gaslighting. We're keeping this in your protection so the reader kind of knows what's going on. Don't trust her, don't trust her, don't trust her. But Cameron's getting this Felix information that's rocking our world. Because right now, that's what I think is going to rock our world. Mm-hmm. Right, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Because this is the question I was going to ask all of you. If it would fix a lot of things about the chapter. Because I know I definitely need to juice up that conversation if you will with Essie in the beginning um I think I was trying to hold back too much information and it just kind of ended up feeling like the plot itself is not necessarily moving forward when I think Essie needs to divulge more to Cameron just kind of like you mentioned about Felix or um even about the fact that she knows who Cameron is um she can still be really cryptic but maybe just get at it Okay. I do. I do often think that sometimes readers, um, you know, one of the things I'm learning is that you can be more heavy-handed than you think you can. I'm really that too. Right. Reader, readers, readers don't want to work. Readers don't want. They're going to see your book as entertainment. Right. And many and of them want enough information where they think they're figuring it out, but really you've been spoon feeding them the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, because I see certain books that I love, but they're absolutely books where you have to work at to get certain things out of, and you have to work, and, uh, and I'm loving it because you got to kind of work at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, right? And other people are like, I hate this. And I'm like, they're like, nothing happened. I was like, you didn't read that book. Yeah. You were, I mean, you scanned that book and you saw the words, but you were not, you were not engaged with the text. Right. 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 So, so, so yeah, you know, um, I, I mean, and, and, and here, here, so, so what I'm saying is you can be more heavy handed than you think readers might need and still be cryptic in the way that Michaela is talking about. Okay. I think that, I, you know, I think that that's possible. And your betas after us, they'll give you a lot, they'll give you a lot of hints because I, I, I've learned something about group in that, like, because, because group is the first pass, sometimes group way overthinks things. <laughs> For okay. sure. Way, way too, like, you know, if you, you know, and, and, and if you want to do this, then I think that maybe this would be a good idea, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> We're, we're missing a we're, we're missing a lot of things we're missing a lot of things here because and it's because we're the first pass it's because it's because we know we're the first pass and we need to have something to to to, to be helpful with mm-hmm. on there and so sometimes what I think it does is I think that subconsciously um, sometimes we, we we get too far out of the realm of what's necessary for the story or what people need and, and whatnot rather if, if you took some advice that we give in group then you would just be like off of the story that the story won't work anymore because of <laughs> because of reason right and I, and I think we all do it in group in the first in the first pass right whereas the beta readers who are, who are reading the book 
token full in one in either a continuous setting or more continuous settings than we get in group can really say if those things are working. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it makes perfect sense. And I've I've thought about that um, for a while because we're getting a chapter and now a chapter every other week, so it feels like a lot of time has passed in a certain situation when it really hasn't, or you know, but. Yeah. I like the ideas you guys give. But but also but also and yeah, but also we can't you know also like I said, group can't overthink overthink it because sure. because we are that first we are that first pass. Mm -hmm. right? And it's like right. oh, we're trying to be helpful. I'm d I'm done. That's those are okay. my turn. <laughs> Thanks, Wyatt. All right, my turn. Your turn. Yeah, I had to run downstairs. I heard a crash and then my niece started screaming her head off, so I had to make sure she wasn't oh. dead or anything. <laughs> I guess oh, she just. No, I don't like hearing crashes. <laughs> I know. I'm either screaming or silence. Both are bad. <laughs> she's fine. She uh, fell down the last two stairs, kind of did a head dive, but she's okay. So. Oh, how old is she? She's two. Oh yeah. Oh. So. My 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 daughter is a year and a half, and in this house, she can't. She can't. The the way the floors are, if she's in if she's in any of her onesies, she can't like she can't stay up. I mean, cause she'll start <laughs> running and then whoosh, boom. Yeah. Because of the way the floors are, you know, in the old house, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. Now that we're here, it's like, yeah. So I hear you. That's <laughs> scary stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, and journey's one who she's in the stage where she doesn't see danger. She, she, she doesn't understand gravity. She just thinks there'll be someone there to catch her. So. Yeah. Well, that means a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think I have a ton to add. Most of what I had was talked about in some form or another by the other two. So most of the inline stuff is just stuff that I wanted you to flesh out more that you are a little bit vague on. So I don't know. Most of that I think you can look at things like you talk about the woman showing no signs of aging and I kind of wanted more detail in that. And then you actually did give it a little bit as we went on. So just things like that to kind of look at and either flesh out or reword um, some places you were telling us things. And I wanted you to kind of show them through the actions a little bit more. I think overall my big thing, and, and it kind of goes along with what Wyatt said about um, the conflict is, I don't know, I think you have conflict in there, but I think you could really up the tension, especially through the different characters. The one girl, is it Ravina? That's uh, the girl with the braids. Mm -hmm. You kind of talked about her glaring and being angry, and I, I think you could kind of ratchet that up and 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 create more tension in the scene using her. You could use the other characters too, but it just felt a little bit like she's walking through and seeing this. And I actually did like to see her walking through. It's kind of a good way to expose us to the world she's in, but it also didn't feel like there was a whole lot of tension or urgency there. Mm -hmm. So I think you could add that. Okay. And then this this is kind of important. She's kind of passing out and she says, what did they dose me with? Or, let's see. Actually, I think the first time I noticed that was earlier. She was, you know, like the room was, uh, I, can't, I can't remember where it is. The room was spinning and she kind of seemed like she was on the verge of passing out. And I wasn't sure why. And so I was thinking, oh, here we go. So I'm on page four. The blood rushed out of her head and left her feeling like she might pass out. And I was wondering if maybe she got hurt before, like when she was fighting rigs and I didn't remember it like that could definitely be but then you talk about her being dosed with something so I'm not sure exactly what happened that she's suddenly passing out am I missing that yeah so it would be good to probably put a little reminder in there but it's just because she was tranquilized again um and it's just the effects from that so I could definitely did that, that happen in. like last chapter is that what happened last chapter yeah okay yeah well and I mean because, like we just talked about, because it was last chapter, anyone reading this would probably remember that. But at the same time, she should be dealing with the effects of that the whole time, or at least worrying about it, thinking about it. So I would I would mention it earlier in the chapter. Okay. And that will, you know, kind of double function as a reminder anyway. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, again, most of this I'm reading through my notes and it's inline stuff. Show us a little bit more or, you know, you use the same word several times. Yeah, and I would I would like to see, again, kind of, kind of what Wyatt said, I would like to see something new introduced because... I think the problem is that the conflict you have here is that, you know, like we said, she's a prisoner and we don't trust these people, but we kind of already knew all of that last chapter. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see it like kind of something new to kind of push us forward in the narrative, be introduced, even if it's small in terms of conflict. And I, again, the thing that jumped out at me was Ravina because she was glaring and you could make her protest more or maybe make her, I don't know, slug Cameron or something like that, you know, just to kind of up the tension there. In the first draft, she did, so... Did she? Yeah. 
So those were my big notes. I'll let you go over the stuff that's in line because it's not anything you can't fix pretty easily. But yeah, I did like the chapter and I like where it's going and I'm interested in this new community she's uncovered, but I just think you could ratchet up the tension a little bit more. Okay, awesome. So this is where <clears throat> I submitted this knowing I had questions. My big question being like, <laughs> why is this chapter not working? <laughs> but you guys helped to answer that. So, you know, Jernay did mention like, She thinks it's time for Kevin to start talking. So it's interesting to get, Michaela, your point of view, too, because you said you like that she doesn't talk. So, yeah, maybe I just need to make a decision. I don't know what my question is. Or you can go halfway between the two and end this with her saying something, and that would be a good, punchy ending. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I I like like your style. (laughs) Well, well, what should she she say? And and, And it should probably be in response to something. Yeah, well, so that's what I'm th- like. I'm, I'm trying to think of ways to, um, you know, beef up that conversation with Essie. And so, does it end? So I, it'll probably come from something like that. Um, I don't know yet, but I do like the thought of her. Yeah, I'm gonna play with it, see if it works. Things around a lot to make that work, but it's an idea. Or you should just have her say something like really. Mm-hmm. It might also depend on what's going to happen next. Is she going to meet her roommate? Yes. You could have her say something to her roommate, but I mean, yeah, it, it really comes down to you figuring out what you want to do because are her first words going to be in anger in response to something negative or are they going to be because someone's okay. actually nice to her and so she talks to them because they're not being mean, you know? Yeah. However you change it, it's going to change all the rest of the... <laughs> I know. So maybe, okay, so maybe before I do that, I could still juice up what Essie tells her in terms of just like a few more lines of information that just make Cameron wonder like, okay, who is this woman and why have I never met her? Things like that, things that, you know, you brought to my attention. And then I'll let you know if there's anything, you know, pertinent to the next chapter going forward. I'll put that into my next one. But maybe I'll just have you read the next chapter and we'll go from there. I'm hoping I actually do like the next chapter as well as I remember. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. If you if you make a pass on your next chapter before you send it to us, having all these comments in mind might help and something will click mm-hmm. on, what, on what you should do when you go through that pass. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys. This is awesome. I'm realizing that I actually do need to start an outline because I keep getting ideas and details and I'm losing other details. Stupid outline. <laughs> Stupid books. Stupid books. Ah. <sighs> How do we keep it all straight? Well, and I'm getting, so Lethal, thank you, I mean, for giving me a million more ideas by suggesting the book the last 50 pages, because now, <laughs> I, now I just don't know what to do. I want to do it all. But it's, it's extremely helpful. So yeah. I actually have a place to go. <laughs> Good. Very excited about that. Good. Nice. Okay. Anyway, I will stop talking. Except that now it's Wyatt's turn, so I will continue to talk about Wyatt's story. insert next few parts. Okay, that's the end of what I have for you today. Again, let me apologize one more time for the kind of sound and technical difficulties, but I hope you found some value in that and that it helps you, you know, gain a little bit of clarity about what a critique group is and how helpful they can be when you're writing your story. If you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram and yeah, get out there and find yourself a writing group and make sure and get those words written. Have fun, everybody. Talk to you next week. If you would like to support the show as a patron, hop over to www.patreon.com forward slash story savant. If you're big on Facebook, join our Facebook community at bit.ly forward slash story savant Facebook. To get a free PDF of my nine essential plot points for a page turning story, sign up at bit.ly forward slash story savant courses. All these links are in the show notes. Hi there. Before you go, if you found value in this episode, I would appreciate it so much if you could leave me a review on iTunes. Be sure to screenshot it, share it on your favorite social media platform and tag me. Remember, only you can tell your story and there are tons of people out there waiting to connect with it. So get out there and write the best story you can write. Remember, only you can change someone's heart with your fire-breathing dragons, your mind-blowing mysteries, your epic romance and your intense thrillers. So be a story savant and get out there and get that sucker written.